Building full stack applications with AI is really beneficial for many of us developers and regular users who are trying to implement AI into our workflows. On this channel, we have made multiple types of apps from predictive modeling apps for the stock market to interactive games to even creating UI components that could be used to create your application. As AI evolves with the release of newer models, the output of apps will only keep on getting better and better. And guess what? I have another practical way for you to build full stack applications with the familiar automation platform I've showcased multiple times on this channel, where I used it to automate my data entry processing or even created a WhatsApp chatbot that deployed AI agents to carry out my tasks. This is where I would like to introduce Vectorshift, a no-code AI automation platform where you can simply build AI automations, AI agents, assistants, chatbots, and today I will be showcasing how you can build a full-stack AI SaaS app with no code required. This application that I'm going to be building is a form application which will gather various inputs and outputs, whether that is a voice input or an image output. You can also have it so that it is going to be able to process multiple of these different outputs and inputs. So with that thought guys, this is something that I'm going to be showcasing as an example. So stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. So what I want you guys to do first is head over to the vectorshift.ai website, which I'll leave a link to as well as all the other links that I use in today's video in the description below. Once you head over to Vectorshift's website, I want you guys to click on the get started button and I want you guys to create an account with your Google account or with GitHub. You can also use your email address to get started. Once you create your account, you'll be then sent over to the pipeline page. This is basically your main dashboard where you're going to be able to manage all your automations. You have a marketplace in which you can basically deploy ready-made templates for different automations where you can chat with your Excel files or you can have it so that you can deploy AI assistance for compliance detection or you can have various sorts of different templates that you can deploy for various use cases. You can upload your own knowledge base, you have various automations you can manage as well as various other factors such as analytics to track your automations. Now head back to the pipeline page and what you're going to be doing is clicking on this addition sign. You're going to be creating your pipeline from scratch but you can see that you can get started with different factors or different categories such as automations, chatbots, or knowledge bases. But you can just create one from scratch and you can see that these are other templates that you can basically access. For example, you can automate your Gmail flow or you can deploy different assistants. In this case, we're going to be creating a pipeline from scratch to build our applications. Once it finishes loading up, you'll be then sent over to this drag and drop UI that we're going to be utilizing to create our app. This is not your generic type of application creation tool, which you would see many times on this channel. We have Typey, Claude Dev, and many of these other tools that we use to simply just prompt in a different type of response to generate a full on application. In this case, we're going to be utilizing vector shift with its no code drag and drop UI to build various components to build this app out. This way it's going to be more intuitive and it's going to basically have more practical basic components that are way more applicable than what you would basically get generated with some tool like Claude Dev. So let's get started with this form app. This is where it's going to be able to process multiple inputs and outputs, whether that's images or videos or even voice. So what we can do is first getting started with an input node as well as an output node, which is quite foundational for any workflow to be like functional. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. Now, this app that I'm going to be generating is going to be able to basically take in different inputs to generate blog posts. But the reason why I wanted to create a form app in particular rather than a chatbot is because the chatbot would be restricted to one input and output, whereas a form application can process information in multiple inputs and outputs. For example, it can generate text and an image for a blog post. Now, since this is a form application that will help generate blog posts, we're going to need more input nodes and I'll explain why. Since we already have one input node already, this one can be our example text node. The second one will be able to process the audience. The third one will be able to process different topics and the fourth one will be able to process keywords. Next, I'm going to be placing down a large language model node from OpenAI. 
This will basically explain why I placed these input nodes beforehand. But before we even get to that, you can paste in even open source nodes as well as utilizing Anthropic's Sonnet 3.5 model. But the reason why I pasted this OpenAI large language model node is because it is going to be able to process our input queries, meaning that whenever different inputs such as the topic or keywords are inputted to generate the blog post, the OpenAI large language model will take these different prompts to help generate that blog post. So I have went along and I also placed in another OpenAI large language model node. And I also named the different inputs. You can also select the different types of inputs that you would want, such as files, as well as audio. Now, the reason why I placed this other OpenAI large language model node is because I gave it a system prompt stating that based on the writing style in the example, which is over here, create a style guide for a blog or publication that captures the essence of the example's tone. Emphasize engaging techniques that help readers feel connected to the content. So now that we have a way we would want to respond with the input text what we can do is connect everything together this is where the input text will be connected to this large language model node and then it'll later be connected to this other large language model node so first things first we're going to then give it a system prompt to connect this input node and to do so just create insert variable and you can just rename this to example and once that is set you can just simply connect these two together now, what you're going to be needing to do is exactly doing the same thing for audience, topic, and keywords. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the next three input nodes. So now you can just simply connect the different components together. The style will be this OpenAI large language model node, as in how it's going to be basing off the article style. You can then connect the audience to this large language model node, and you can do the same thing with topic and keywords. Next, what we're going to be doing is focusing on an image generation node. And the reason why we're going to be utilizing that node is because a blog post can't always be text. It needs to have images as well. So we're going to utilize the Dolly E model to help us generate an image that correlates to the blog post that we're going to be generating. To paste in an image generation node, just head over to the multimodal tab and paste in an image gen node. Now I give it a system prompt where I state, it stated that generate an image that can be used in the blog. So this way I connected the variable by inserting this blog variable to connect the large language model node, which will give it context to generate that image. So it's going to have two outputs. The image will have one output node. So you're going to need to paste in another output node. And then the original output node that we have is going to be processing the text. So you just simply keep one as text. And the next one will be image. So once all the changes are made, such as changing the models to whatever your preference, as well as giving it a system prompt, what you can do is simply click on deploy changes to save all edits. You can also click on run pipeline to test this out to see if all the inputs are functional. And once they are approved and functional, you can simply just export this pipeline as a form as this is a form application. It's not a chatbot or an automation. So just simply click on this, give it a name. I'm going to call it blog form and we're going to then click on create form. This will then send us over to the, the pi general pipeline form. This is where you're going to be able to configure your application where you can paste in another logo. You can change the text over here and you can basically configure how everything looks. Once you agree with all of this, you can then proceed forward and you can then simply click on export. I made a couple of changes. I added my own logo. I changed it to World of AI and I stated that it's a blog article generator. To see how your application looks, what you can do is you can open the form up. Now, before you even get to that, you can actually protect with SSO uh, authentication. You can also protect this with a password. So only a only couple of people can actually utilize it in your business or whatever workflow that you're utilizing it in. You can also share form as an iframe. So, once you have deployed this, you can then go back into this application that we have created. And what we're going to be doing now is generating an application or a blog post, sorry, with this app that we've basically just created. We're going to basically start off by specifying an audience. In this case, we're going to be specifying software engineers. And a keyword that we can give is generative AI or AI in general. Now, an example text is something that you want the blog post to replicate or utilize as reference for your generation. So in this case, I'm going to go over to Vectorship's blog post on the good and the bad of 
problematic use cases of LMs. So what we can do is just simply copy this text and what we can do is just paste this into our blog post as an example of text. Now the topic could be about, mm, we can say generative AI as an example. And we're going to then click submit to then have the generator focus on creating our blog post based off the audience that we gave it, the keywords and example text. So this will take a couple seconds. Once it has done that, you can see that the blog post will start generating and you're going to be able to then copy this and paste this into your own site. And as you saw, the second output is going to be utilized for the image generation. So you have your blog post generated and then you have an image for that blog post. And this was a simple app that I created with vector shift within a couple of minutes. You can see how easy it is and how interactive this application is. Now I want you guys to play around with this app and let me know what you actually generate in terms of the blog post. So if you do have anything cool, I'm going to leave a link to this blog or this application in the description below so that you can play around with it. But that's basically for today's video on how you can build different apps with something like VectorShift. VectorShift is truly amazing because there's so many different things that you can utilize this app platform for. So with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave all the links that I used in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access different subscriptions on a monthly basis for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.